Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.6.4.1, the principles of homeostasis and negative feedback from the AQA A-Level Biology specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. First of all, we need to know that homeostasis in mammals involves physiological control systems that maintain the internal environment within restricted limits. We need to know the importance of maintaining a stable core temperature and stable blood pH in relation to enzyme activity, as well as the importance of maintaining a stable blood glucose concentration in terms of availability of respiratory substrates and of the water potential of the blood. We also need to know about negative feedback and how it restores systems to their original level. And finally, we need to know that the possession of separate mechanisms involving negative feedback controls departures in different directions from the original state, giving a greater degree of control. Note that the specification wants students to be able to interpret information relating to examples of not only negative, but also positive feedback. So I think it would be useful to give you a small overview of what positive feedback is and provide you with a few examples. So let's make a start by defining homeostasis. Homeostasis involves physiological control systems that maintain the internal environment within restricted limits. So what things do we control? We need to control things such as core temperature and blood pH because these are factors that affect enzyme activity. Why are enzymes important? Well, enzymes are important in regulating and increasing the rate of metabolic reactions. What effect does temperature have on enzymes that makes it so important to control? Very low temperatures will slow the rate of enzyme activity because enzyme and substrate molecules have less kinetic energy, so the frequency of collisions between enzyme and substrate molecules decreases, which in turn slows the rate of enzyme-substrate complex formation. This slows the rate of reaction. Very high temperatures, on the other hand, will cause hydrogen and ionic bonds to break that hold the enzyme's tertiary structure in place, altering the tertiary structure, causing the enzyme to denature, which in turn also slows the rate of enzyme substrate complex formation, slowing the rate of reaction. What effect does pH have on enzymes? Well, the change in concentration of H plus and OH minus ions, like before with high temperatures, interferes with hydrogen and ionic bonds, which hold the enzyme's tertiary structure in place, hereby altering the enzyme's tertiary structure, which can lead to denaturation of the enzyme, so the rate of enzyme substrate complex formation decreases, so the rate of reaction decreases. To recap factors that affect enzyme activity, which includes temperature and pH, just follow the link to my video on enzymes top right. Other things which we control include the blood glucose concentration. This affects the water potential of the blood, meaning that water may either enter or leave cells by osmosis, causing them to swell or shrink. Also, if the concentration of blood glucose is too low, not enough respiratory substrate is available for respiration. Next, we need to know about the principle of negative feedback. This restores systems back to their original level. Deviation from the norm leads to rebalance. First of all, we have a stimulus, which is a change in the internal environment. This is detected by a receptor and is passed on to a coordinator, which coordinates a negative feedback mechanism, meaning that either nerve impulses or hormones are sent out, which leads to the reversal of the change. If no more stimulus is detected, the negative feedback mechanism is switched off. Examples of negative feedback include the ones we just talked about. They include the control of blood glucose concentration as well as thermoregulation, i.e. control of body temperature. If one of these factors changes, then negative feedback mechanisms try to restore these back to the original level. For example, if body temperature increases, then negative feedback mechanisms will try to decrease the body temperature back to its original level. Note that in the body, we often have multiple separate negative feedback mechanisms. This allows control of departures in different directions from the original state, giving a greater degree of control i.e. if you'd only have one negative feedback mechanism, you would only be able to reverse a change in one direction from the norm. All you would be able to do to help would be to turn it on or off, leading to a slower response and less control. And finally, I think it would be useful to consider positive feedback as well. In positive feedback, effectors respond to further increase the level away from the normal level. Examples include blood clotting, where platelets release chemicals which further activate more platelets. Other examples include prolactin in lactation, or the influx of sodium ions in an action potential. Great, that would be the principles of homeostasis and negative feedback covered. 
we've covered how homeostasis in mammals involves physiological control systems that maintain the internal environment within restricted limits. We've covered the importance of maintaining a stable core temperature and stable blood pH in relation to enzyme activity. We have also covered the importance of maintaining a stable blood glucose concentration in terms of availability of respiratory substrate and of the water potential of the blood. We have also covered negative feedback and how it restores systems to their original level, and how the possession of separate mechanisms involving negative feedback controls departures in different directions from the original state, giving a greater degree of control. Finally, we've also covered a bit on positive feedback, which should help us to interpret information relating to examples of both negative and positive feedback. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering the control of blood glucose concentration.